Are you scratching your head wondering how three of these pickets can be transformed into this gorgeous $10 planter box? In this video, we are not only going to build one together, but I'm going to provide the plans absolutely free. It's in my thumbnail. It's right here in front of me, and I'll try to figure out how to add it to the description as a printable file. I've never done that. All I ask is for you to like this video, maybe share it, maybe subscribe. I'm not going to get too pushy. This is the second draft of this planter box that I have made, and oddly enough, my first draft nests inside of my second draft. Strange, but cool. On the second draft, we have gotten these scraps down to almost zero. Zero scraps from this box. Does not allow for you to make errors in the cuts, just so, just so you know. Grow anything from flowers and vegetables to perennial shrubs and trees in these self-contained planter boxes. With a small footprint, these planters work well along railings, fences, next to doors, on patios, and even in your car. Cause it's freaking planter season, baby! The center board here is for visual presentation only. I cut the miters on the top last because even though all of my cuts are the exact same, um, cupping and bowing can actually make the boxes be about an eighth of an inch bigger or smaller when you're completely done. And I want these miters on the top to be nice and tight and sexy looking for whoever hopefully buys them. The first two pickets I cut the exact same. You're going to get two of the long 14 inch sides, two of the 12 and 3 fourths inch smaller sides, and one of two and two of two for the bottom boards underneath. To keep the box perfectly square, you have to reduce two of the sides to accommodate the thickness of the boards. Generally, these pickets are 5 eighths of an inch thick. 5 eighths plus 5 eighths is 1 and a fourth. 14 minus 1 and 1 fourth is 12 and 3 fourths. Now back to the show. The last board we are ripping down to 1 and 3 fourths of an inch thick. I chose this width because you can get three pieces out of the 5 and a half inch thick planks. Once the picket was ripped down, I cut two of the strips to 16 inch pieces for the legs and the center board, again, we're gonna set aside to do last. These planter boxes stand on four inch legs, so the bottom is lifted up off the ground. This protects your deck or patio while making it easy to clean underneath the planter. As you can see, these have a full bottom, still providing adequate water drainage for excess water. With the final plan here, I did drill five holes in the bottom as well, just for water, because these boards in the center were starting to get tighter and tighter as I dialed in my size. I have filed my picket planter boards by number of knots. Just kidding. I grabbed three pickets at random. I cut off the staples holding the barcodes. The ends are usually rough and not 90 degrees. Set your table saw to a sixteenth of an inch under one and three fourths of an inch or one and eleven sixteenths. I set it to this measurement so I can get three equal strips for the legs and top lip. There's even a little sliver taken off on the last pass so I know that they are all the same size. At the miter saw, I took two of the ripped down one and three fourths of an inch boards and cut them to sixteen inches for the legs. After making the first cut, I repeat the cut using one of the legs as a guide. If you have a stop block or miter saw that measures 16th of an inch, high five to you. Then the other two full pickets are cut twice at 14 inches for the long sides, then twice at 12 and 3 fourths of an inch for the short sides, and once at 12 and 3 fourths of an inch for the bottoms. Now on to assembly. First, remove any random materials that might be in the way. Then I removed the extra scrap pieces from my display. You can skip this step unless you insist on reassembling your pickets. That board we are using last for the top lip. I organized all my pieces into piles, stacking the legs, the short and bottom pieces, and the long pieces. This minimizes the chance of errors during assembly because it's happened before. Grab two of the long pieces and make sure the good sides are facing up. This is going to be the outside of the box. Gather some wood glue, a nail gun, and a drill. And this song must have been a good one. I am using Tight Bond 3 Ultimate. It's a waterproof exterior glue that isn't as thick as Tight Bond's other glues. 
Squirt a line of glue and align the leg with the end cuts of the long boards. I am using 1 inch 18 gauge brad nails. Fire in 4 nails and repeat the process on the other side. I also applied wood glue all the way down the legs so that they do not separate later on. The leg edges are flush on the exterior creating a lip to cover the edges of the short sides. Three nails hold it in place. The nails are mainly there to hold the boards together while the glue dries. Now repeat the process for the other side. You may have noticed a nail counter. This is new. Take a guess at the number of nails it takes. It actually surprised me. Comment your number if you dare. I use my table saw fence to hold one side up while I apply the wood glue. The fence also comes in handy when I push the sides together. Apply some glue on the lip and align your short boards with the top of the box. I have a few boxes where the pickets were not the same width and one side was longer than the other, but this is less noticeable with how the legs wrap around. Again, four nails in each side. They are less noticeable since they are on the inside of the box. Flip it over and repeat. If you have a board that is cupped pretty bad, just note that most of the glue is going to leak out, so try to target the area where your boards will make contact. Now on to the bottom. I do not glue my bottoms. The gluing surface is minimal and each board gets nails on three of the sides, so it's pretty strong. I line up the bottoms with the direction of the short sides, but if you find the boards too short, try aligning them with the long sides. Again, cupped pickets affect the box dimensions quite a bit. I use three nails per edge and four nails on the long sides of those boards. Was anybody's guess 54 nails? Because we have quite a few more to come.
I've been pumping these out so much that I, I forgot I haven't cut this yet, so I'm just looking around for where my other boards went. For the lip, measure the boxes assembled width. Mine was 15 and a fourth of an inch, so I am cutting my tops to 15 and 5 eighths. That is the typical measurement that I've gotten quite a few times. Make an adorable little triangle and cut four mitered top boards. The board on the left side left over with the arrow, we are using for the missing bottom piece. With the square side, I mark how long I need that board to be. Cut it to size. and put two nails in each side. I drill one hole in the center and one hole in each corner about two inches from the legs. This gives the box plenty of drainage. Again, the sides are not glued, and this will allow water to leave the box through the sides as well. Flip the box over and find out it has a wobble. This would go away on its own once there was weight in the box, but I am not a fan of customers seeing this when picking up their finished planters. To remove this, you can sand down one of the legs or Simply put a board under the long leg that's not causing the wobble and press down on the box until it no longer wobbles. Then, when the glue is set up, it will never wobble again. Ta-da! Apply glue to the top and align the board so there is an equal lip around the top of the box. Then put one nail in each of the board's miters and one centered in the sideboard to help press the top board down until the glue dries. And there it is, a completed box. Did you guess 80 nails? Great job! If you didn't guess 80, I'm still proud that you're watching this video. Now, I did add the option for either an awareness ribbon that they could add on to it, or they could add on a cross if they wanted to add either of those features to it. I would do one side for free if they want all sides I'd start charging them because that does take a little bit of time. But however, I did make a template. I used my good templates and then I made a template so that I can just smack it in the corner to get that done. So, why am I so winded? So I pop them there, I just clamp that down and I router out whichever template and then it can go in whichever side they choose. Just something, something, a little special. 
And there you have it. Smash that like button if you enjoyed this content. YouTube doesn't usually promote small channels like mine to viewers due to its lower view count. So that like button does a lot for me. Thanks again for watching, and hey, go watch another video. They are right here. Go watch them. Guys, $10 to build this planner. They have been selling like hotcakes at 30 around me. This video actually took me two extra weeks to post because I have been pumping these things out like no other, um, turning 20 bucks profit on each one, and you set up an assembly line, it takes literally 25 minutes to build one. It's, it's crazy. So definitely start going to make some money on these or just make them for yourself. You, you do you, okay? Man.